Hello, I'm Jakob Engblom, and this is my project report for the project I did in the prompt course Machine Learning with Big Data in the fall of 2018. And what I did was to do image classification on the Fashion Eminist dataset. The concept for my project is that I wanted to have something that could demonstrate image classification and machine learning to people like my kids and my family because you know, it's good to have an intuition for how these things work. Uh, the method I used is pretty straightforward. I trained uh, several image classifiers using the standard Fashion MNIST benchmark data, which is essentially supervised machine learning since everything is labeled. I then evaluated this both on the standard test images provided as part of Fashion MNIST and on a set of novel images, which I built myself, essentially a homemade test data set. The machine learning setup is, once again, entirely straightforward. I have labeled training data. Some subset of it is used as validation data for the training algorithms. And then we iterate through training until the model is good enough that it makes sense to start using it for prediction or inference. At that point, we feed it with labeled test data. We get a set of classifications out of it. And then we evaluate the accuracy by comparing the you know, given known good labels in the test data with the classifications as provided by the model. Uh, the images in Fashion MNIST are 28 by 28 pixel grayscale. There are 60,000 images in the training set and 10,000 images in the test set. They're labeled using 10 classes and they all come from the Salando um, online closed retailer website. It was put online by some of the researchers in 2017. So it's a nice, you know, well-groomed test set for image recognition. In addition to the standard data, I also applied data augmentation in order to get more variety into the image set. And what I did here was to randomly, for each image, I created five additional variants by randomly flipping it horizontally, zooming it in or out, or moving the image around the frame a bit. There are other operations possible, but they didn't seem to add much value to this particular set of experiments. In the general case, it's probably good to use even more types of data augmentation. My homemade image set was achieved in two ways. I did some handmade drawings of clothes to see if that would work. And I also downloaded, you know, kind of nicely curated images from several other retailer websites because it makes sense that if I take a picture of some kind of article of clothing from Kapal, well, the Solando data set should be able to match up to that. And this ended up with a total of 48 images, which is enough to illustrate the concept, but I mean, it's not in any way, shape or form a statistically significant sample for you know, how well this would fare on any image. I used four different image classifiers, a basic linear model like TensorFlow Linear with all pixels as the features. I used three different CNN models. I took model one and model three from existing examples available on the web and CNN model two is a variant of CNN model one. And CNN Model 3 is the, by far the most complex of these, featuring about 3.3 million parameters with three CNN layers and two dense layers, while Model 1 has only one-tenth the number of parameters from two CNN layers and one dense layer. The accuracy of the models, uh, the linear model did pretty badly, and when we fed it with augmented data, it did horribly badly because it was fundamentally overwhelmed. I mean, it couldn't handle that much variation given its very simple architecture. CNN Model 3 uh, was clearly superior to the other models and with augmented data, it achieved an accuracy of almost 94% on the standard test images, which is pretty decent. And it got 40 out of 48 of my homemade images, right? Which is actually also really good compared to some of the other results. So here's an example of a bad result. So this is the linear model uh, with augmented data, which is the worst I have. And I'm using a confusion matrix to explain the outcome, where on the um, vertical, we have the actual label of each image. And then on the horizontal, we have what the prediction we get out. And as we can see here, the uh, linear model has a clear tendency to label things as shirts, no matter what they are. And when it comes to my homemade images, it just says that everything is a sandal which means it gets three out of 48 right because there happen to be three sandals in the data set. I don't know why it says it's shirts for the standard data and sandals for my data set. It's just, you know, 
one of these things in machine learning algorithms like this, you have no idea why they do what they do. Uh, the best model, CNN model 3 with augmented data, has a much cleaner looking confusion matrix. Essentially, the more data you have on the diagonal, the better the model is. You really would like everything to be like a thousand on the standard data set. So this gets really close to that. Uh, on my homemade images, this also does a really good job, as you can see. There are a few you know, misses, but honestly, this is a really nice result. Uh, one thing I did notice was the need for augmentation in order to have good result on my homemade images. So here is one image of an ankle boot, and when it's facing left, it always gets you know, a correct classification from pretty much all the models except the really bad one. However, uh, if you flip it around horizontally, uh, it gets classified as something else, bag, t-shirt, whatever, quite often a bag actually. And that's because in the basic data set, all the shoes are facing left. But once I added the horizontal flips as one of the data augmentation options, suddenly the model started to recognize shoes facing that way quite reliably. So this shows just how, you know, how tightly coupled to the training data a model is. I mean, if what you show it has no, you know, real representative in the training data, it will give you the wrong result. And if you do things like rotate the boot, I mean, the results are all over the place. It's a t-shirt or a bag or something. So in summary, uh, what I learned from this is that the convolutional neural network models can easily do better in humans on classification of fashion MNIST. Uh, I mean, there is some anecdotal evidence that humans might do 80-85% correct classifications because it's really hard to tell on these small grainy images. Uh, when I use the standard image set and show novel images, it really doesn't you know, perform all that well since essentially my images might have the shoes facing the wrong way, for example. There might be other little variations like that. How are they centered in the image? How much of the image square do they fill? I mean, all of those things could be overcome with augmentation. And I also had to spend quite a bit of time to prepare my images to kind of look similar in style to the fashion MNIST based data set. It's not just scale it down to 28 by 28, but you need to think a bit about how close do you crop them, for example. It's also clear that building a good CNN setup takes a lot of time and experimentation. There are a lot of hyper parameters you can set, you know, different types of layers, how big are the layers, how much dropout should you apply, when do you apply normalization, when do you apply um, pooling and things like that. And it's also clear that training time can just explode if you have lots of data and a complex uh, CNN network. I also wanted to point out that this whole outside the box image set can be taken to an extreme, right? I mean, I, I show the, the models images of clothing and it did a reasonable job. When you show this model an image of a pingu or a cat or a geometric image, it will tell you that it is something out of the 10 available labels because that's what it does. There is no do not know, I have no, I no idea what this is in this kind of model. It basically learns from the training of data and provides an output. I mean, that's all there is to it. There is no smarts, there's no intelligence really in this so-called so artificial intelligence. And that's it. Thank you.